Because uh, why would we want to use our data in ChatGPT? Because when you ask ChatGPT for facts, who knows how that meme ends, you're going to have a bad time. Well, this time we actually had a good time because ChatGPT actually know the answer, but uh, sometimes it's it's a big mix. You get mixed results, you get hallucination. And uh, for, one, uh, for one thing, we can't get facts out of ChatGPT when we are using internal data that ChatGPT can know about because um, it is not on Wikipedia or not on the web, so not in the ChatGPT training data. And a little bit about me. My name is Robin. I work at a German energy company. I'm not an IT guy. I'm a mechanical engineer. And most important about that, I have no clue how all these AI stuff works. But what I do know, it's that they have really easy APIs that we can use and leverage. So we don't know, we don't have to know how all of this works, but we can just connect to it and use it in our Power Platform projects, just like um, the OpenAI embeddings at point where you're gonna look at today, because we're gonna vectorize our data. And yeah, let's see how we can do that and um, how we can call that endpoint. But first of all, let's jump into a small demo video right here. I made a movie database uh, that uh, consists of 7,000 uh, movies. And as you can see, the, the plots and genres and uh, years of the movies and so on. And uh, if we are now looking for a search term, then we will find movies that are similar to that search term. So, um, David, I will need in a few minutes a uh, movie search term for you, and we're going to um, search live for movies. And then it's a little bit like in the previous demo. Then we provide JetGPT with context of the movies. So this could be any data, not um, not data that JetGPT actually knows about, like like movies. But this could be any any data because in the prompt we're going to put the context in there, and then let JetGPT make sense of that and tell it why we should watch those movies. So um, embeddings, what are embeddings? What is vectorization and why do we need it? Um, well, it's a cool concept where uh, we get uh, a text or um, uh, yeah, just a word and we represent the meaning of the text or word with a vector. So what can we think of that? How, how does that look like? This is a simple vector with two dimensions. So um, if we have an X value and a Y value, we can um, show it in the plot. So for the word dog, we probably have this vector. For the word cat, we have this vector. Then we bring a third word into the mix. In this case, it's Labrador. It's probably here. And now it's all just numbers and then we can calculate the distance between those words. And we see the distance between the word dog and Labrador is shorter than the distance between the word Labrador and cat, which makes sense because it's a dog breed. Of course, in reality, it's not that easy because we don't have two dimensions. Uh, OpenAI use it, uh, uses a model that has 1,500 dimensions. So a little more data, but the concept stays the same and the calculations stay the same and are easily doable for a computer. So let's look exactly at that um, example we had, uh, but let's use real data. So now I'm calling the OpenAI API on this button. And as we see, we get uh, 1,536 numbers back, which is the vector, the meaning of the word dog. And we're doing the same for the word cat. And then we're doing the vector search and check the similarity for the word Labrador. And as we can see, uh, in fact, it has higher similarity to the word dog than it has to the word cat. Let's see how the code looks like for that, because it's not that complicated at all. Make it a little bit bigger. The actual API call, really short. And as I said in the chat uh, a little bit earlier, um, this is not right now in the independent publisher connector, but will be in two or three weeks. This is a custom connector I built, but luckily the documentation on OpenAI page is really good. Or you can just, I already linked that uh, in the chat um, to the repo. 
um, where you will find all the connectors and there is the actual new version I put up there that will be deployed in two or three weeks. So you can get started right now or wait two weeks and just use the independent publisher connector in the platform. And all that uh, the connector wants from us is the model which you want to use, in this case the embedding other model, and the text we want to vectorize, which is the text box in here. And on the other side, we're first doing the same thing, get um, a vector, but we are not using this, uh, this code, which uh, would be the same as, as the last time. But this time we can use the Azure, Azure Open AI service. So I saw a question in the chat where it just was like, um, we needed to be in this region. And if we have sensitive data, especially when we are uh, from Europe, we have to be GDPR compliant. So we don't want our information going to a US service of Open AI. And then, of course, we just deploy our own open AI models in, in Azure and use this. And there's also a great connector you can use. This is not an independent publisher connector, but a custom connector that Daniel Laskiewicz built, um, the same that was speaking earlier. And I've also added the uh, embeddings endpoint there. So you can also download these from the, from the repo. And the whole calculation for the similarity, I will not go into detail right here, but um, it's not too hard, just a few lines um, of code, and we can check the similarity of those two terms. And let's get back to the presentation before we get to the movie demo, because I want to show you what I did here. Um, we won't look, don't look into that, but just uh, looking at it schematically, I downloaded the movie data of 7,000 movies from IMDb. They have a free data set you can play around with. Really cool stuff. There was no summary or plot in there. So I let JetGPT write summaries for 7,000 movies and stored all the metadata up here into Dataverse. And then I created embeddings for all of these 7,000 movies. So we have 7,000 vectors with 1,500 numbers each. And I didn't store them in Dataverse because Dataverse can't make sense of that. There are specialized vector databases. In this case, it's Pinecone, which has a free tier. So um, get an account and start playing around with it. And this uh, database doesn't only help you with storing them, but also retrieving them and calculate it, calculating the, um, the distances in the back end. And when we are retrieving the data, then again, we were typing in a search term like you saw in the demo earlier, create an embedding of that. We get the 10 most similar movies. And then we puzzle back the, the data we got because here are only the IDs of the movie stored. Then we get our metadata from our um, Dataverse database back. And then just like in a previous demo, um, we give context to ChatGPT and let it make sense of that so we we give um, the the plots and the summaries and the name and the years of the movie and then ChatGPT should tell us why this is a great movie i have to watch when searching for the search term xyz oh uh, david yes sir what kind of movie do we want to watch well let's see uh guardians just came out and there's a wide spectrum what do we do what if we do a search on marvel will that work Let's try. So um, now we're getting our data from the database back. Any second. Captain Marvel, of course, uh, yeah, re really close because it's in the title actually, but all these others don't have it in the title. And these are, I think, all Marvel movies. So that seems to work. Was there one sneaking in? No, all Marvel movies, I think. Is this different Avengers? Don't know. Um, and now we're waiting for ChatGPT. This takes a little bit longer, so about 20, 25 seconds, and it will tell us why we should watch those movies when we are looking for a Marvel movie. I wonder if ChatGPT can also add like a post-credit take, like after we read it, it gives us like a sneak preview to what it, see what I did there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, th then it's given this, uh, his take. Um, 
Captain Marvel Fantastic Movie uh, and what it's about. And I also snuck in the URLs and let ChatGPT write an HTML text so we can actually click on that. It's a little bit like the like the Bing with the like the new Bing with the numbers where we can click on the sources. So let's really quickly look at the code on this button. Also, just a few lines of code in here. Um, first of all, again, we get the embedding. Then uh, we do the pine cone query, uh, did a custom connector for that, but they also have good documentation. So it took 10 minutes to set everything up. Um, pass the vector in here. We want the top 10 results back. We puzzle the data back together. This is my Dataverse table. And then we let JetGPT write our review for the movies. And here we are actually passing um, the data we got from the database back in here and yeah, got, uh, got our JetGPT's take for that movie. And for the last slide, let's again jump back to the docu uh, to the presentation because we want to get back to business. So back from the fun, fun projects to probably something more business related. Let's think about uh, support cases like regular customer support or IT support. We have a database full of successful cases where we actually help the customer. Um, let's ChatGPT write a summary of um, every of those cases with the problem and the solution, create an embedding of that and store everything in a vector database. Of course, we're using Azure OpenAI for that because we want to have control over where the data goes to. And on the output, probably this time we have a Power Virtual Agent where the customer can type in a search term. Then there's an embedding created. We get back similar cases from our vector database, puzzle the data back together, and then we provide the context to ChatGPT. We provide the question the customer asked, and then we provide the solutions of the three most similar cases we had in that department. And then it can make sense of that and probably formulate a solution that will actually help the customer. So we put our data in JetGPT. So really amazing stuff. Um, what comes all of this um, AI? And uh, my take is we, it's so easy to connect to those um, APIs. Let it be OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, AI, or other AIs that come out. And my suggestion is start some fun pro projects, get your hands wet uh, in that, and yeah, start building something with it. Thanks, everyone. Back to you, David. Robin, awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. I cannot, uh, I cannot say how awesome this has been uh, by saying it more than three times, right? But really cool stuff. I also appreciate how you showed it can be fun. That helps people learn. Right. I think that's a secret sauce for everybody who's wanting to get in this technology. Find something that's maybe not business related. Did, just because we do have a couple minutes, I did want to ask you, is that something that helped you learn to keep going with the movies you were passionate about? It was fun. And then you kind of looked for the uh, for the business side of it. Yeah, I, I had the, the business in mind, but um, I couldn't I had no no database with business cases. So I looked for something that I was passionate about and I would have fun with a little bit. So. Yeah. Uh, make my own database. Absolutely. Awesome. That is great stuff and a great uh, a great tip for all of us to be able to use that because sometimes it can be hard to say, what am I going to use this for? And maybe not having the passion. In this case, uh, you absolutely use that for something you're passionate about and it led to what is an amazing success. So thank you for that. Awesome stuff. Mm -hmm.